First, I would like to, to say it's been a very impressive uh, for me to be here today. And uh, I wish that uh, more uh, Danish parliamentarians uh, could have been here. Uh, the Danish government, uh, they, uh, they want to promote discipline in the schools. And they uh, should instead promote discipline to the parliamentarians uh, to, uh, to listen to, uh, to clever interventions because uh, if they had been here, uh, they could perhaps uh, get uh, a, a more uh, comprehensive, uh, more balanced uh, um, analysis of this whole uh, war and this whole uh, conflict. Uh, I, uh, I think that uh, uh, that uh, Professor Yohannapur, he made the really important question. Or he said, we should make the important question. Why are we there? And this question is never answered, really. Uh, the arguments, they've been very different. At some time, it's building schools for girls at other times, it's uh, building democracy, at other times again, it's uh, creating social security, and other times again, it's because of our own security. Of course, of course it gives a very difficult situation for the Danish soldiers down there. They are perhaps paying with their lives they are fighting down there. Many of them are very engaged. Many of them are also very idealistic. When they say that we are here to fight for democracy, they mean it. They really mean it. But uh, if this is false, then we have a problem. And uh, when we have these discussions, we have them sometimes, then the government, uh, is going back to the argument ab about our own security. This is what we in Danish call the crown argument. Also like Gordon Brown said, uh, the security in the street of London starts in Afghanistan, in Helmand. And uh, I think that this basic argument is going to be discussed. I had a lot of questions of them, Ted Bauman uh, and others have posed some of them and, uh, but I want to be quite sure to, uh, that I have understood it rightly. When we use it to the Danish foreign minister uh, and telling him, but the terror threat that is not coming from Afghanistan, it is coming from Pakistan, from Somalia, from Yemen, uh, and so on. Then he says, the situation in Afghanistan is very much linked to the stability of Pakistan. If uh, uh, NATO loses Afghanistan, then there's a danger that Pakistan will, could fall apart. There's a danger that uh, the Al-Qaeda again can have a safe haven in Afghanistan. As far as, far as, I, as I understood the answers, these arguments are false. I want to have that stated quite clearly, if that is right, rightly understood, that these are false. There's no interlink uh, between Al-Qaeda and uh, Afghan uh, Taliban. The Al-Qaeda wants to be in all other places than Afghanistan, and there's no danger uh, that uh, uh, this again will happen. This was one question. Uh, and perhaps uh, I could very shortly have this yes, I think, if that's true. But I, I, I'm, I will go home to be quite sure of that. <laughs> yes, this is yes, they're good. Uh, then uh, uh, there's uh, another point which I find important. Uh, the strategy from the West, also from the Obama, from the Danish government, is to strengthen Afghan security forces. Could uh, the people in, in, uh, here uh, 
answer the following question. Isn't there a danger that Afghanistan by that could become a military dictatorship? That you have a Pakistan development, that the only structure functioning in Afghanistan is the Afghan military. And how can we avoid that this will be the perspective by our strategy in strengthening the Afghan army and the Afghan security forces? Thank you. Who would like to have a go on, on this? Sir Smith is, is offering his hand. You asked uh, the first one uh, with a yes, so. Okay, good. So I'll go on to the next one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the military uh, um, based government in Afghanistan. It's clear, you know, that in any of these weak third world countries, you, you cannot have a liberal democracy. You will have other institutions involved in, in, in the governance, whether it's uh, religious institutions or it's uh, military. And, uh, you know, this we have to be realistic about. So it's, it's not a question of either or. I mean, those, you could say, undemocratic institutions or illiberal institutions, whatever, they will be involved of, you know, big families I mean, of course, the Bhutto family plays a role in, in, in Pakistan, and, and, and other families play roles in, in, in Iran. You have these uh, Mullah families. I mean, you see, you know, the same family go, come up, uh, pop up again and again. So, I mean, this is just the situation, and, and so it's the, 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 and of course, in Afghanistan will somehow, especially now that we're building up the military forces, which we will have to finance, by the way, uh, there will be a very, very strong force. So, so th I mean, what we should work for is that, you know, it might have a benign role in the development of that country, as the military, in fact, has had in many ways in Turkey, where it has played a positive role. So it's not an either or. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, the military will play a role. And before allowing Mr. Holger Kuhn Nielsen to continue, uh, would there be any supplementary comments? Mr. Farhang? Yes, Mr. Farhang Yahampur. I think if you really look back at history and see, again, as I said in my talk, how did we get here, it's very useful. When I was in the Faculty of uh, Languages in Isfahan, we had some 40, 50 foreign teachers, lots of them ladies, young women in their early 20s. Afghanistan was a mecca for these backpackers who would go there, unmolested, no problem, nobody touched them. They received every hospitality. In fact, if you really look at the history of Afghanistan, the question of Sunni Shi'i did not arise. It really did not arise. People were not very religious. In other words, the present Taliban is a political development, not a religious development. Sadly, as I said in my talk, we created it. We gave it wings and it is now taking a life of its own. So the solution is, as has been mentioned, when you are talking about a central government in Afghanistan, especially when you want to impose it from outside, this is the greatest danger. The Tajiks do not want to have a central government dominated by Pashtuns, the Pashtuns do not want to have a central government dominated by, and so on and so forth. Therefore, the solution would be some sort of a compromise in between so that they have got more autonomy in their region.